Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm just back from a trip to London, where I had my first meeting with somebody connected with Cracking the Cryptic. Um, other that wasn't an online, uh, an online meeting. So Mark and I went and we had lunch, and it was very cool with this chap here, and that is none other than Codec. Um, and yeah, we met Codec and his mum, and we had a great, well, an enormous amount of sushi. You can see we're all looking quite full there. And uh, yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. Um, and what an absolute privilege to meet the great man himself. And so I've got back home and I thought, well, I need to do I need to do a Kodak puzzle today. So this is Kodak's most recent puzzle. It's called Lion. And I can almost understand the title here because I think these cages do sort of they certainly have the feel of a lion and its mane. If I make that yellow, does it look a bit lion-like? If I give it two eyes, look at this. <laughs> We're getting properly uh, properly lion-like. There we go, I've made a lion. Um, yeah, so I suspect that's why it's called lion. Um, and this is, oh, it's, it's, um, well, it's incredibly symmetrical in terms of the cage disposal, isn't it? The cages have different totals, but they're completely symmetrical around um, uh, around a sort of line of symmetry coming down the middle of the grid here with the cursors moving. Um, and there's an anti-kings move constraint today, which I haven't seen in a puzzle for a while. So we'll have a go at this in just a moment. Do I have anything to tell you before that? Nothing except to prepare yourselves, obviously, for the 1st of June, where we have two incredible Sudoku packs coming out. We're going to run a competition on both. Um, and there'll certainly be a shout out for the first correct answers that we get, as well as Bubbery's U keys um, for those who win the competitions. And basically these are Japanese sum Sudoku packs, which are the ones where you, um, you get a picture in the grid if you complete the puzzle properly. And these have been prepared by Panthera, by The Asylum and by Grockles. Um, so we basically know they're amazing quality. And yeah, we're looking forward to seeing the feedback from all our patrons once they have a go. Um, so that's coming up 1st of June. I don't have anything else, I don't think, to tell you. Um, my sushi adult brain is not giving me any other information. So let me read the, you the rules of Lion. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Digits cannot repeat within a cage. And then uh, cells separated by a king's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So this, the way this works is it's sort of like a, a touching constraint. If this cell is a nine here, you can't, not only can you not put nine in all of the usual Sudoku positions, so a nine in that cell would obviously rule out a nine from all of those positions just by Sudoku. But these two cells can't be a nine either in king's move puzzles because, um, a king, chess king here could jump, could move to this cell and chess move and, and this cell, obviously. So you can see that actually no cell touching uh, this, uh, this digit here can actually contain a nine. And often, well, obviously if the nine was here, that would have no effect at all because all of those cells would be ruled out by being in box five. But where you get a digit on a boundary, it is gonna be affected by the king's move constraint. So that's what we're gonna have to think about today do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And the first thing I can see here is that Codec has been very kind because I think I can write in the options for all of those cages straight away. Let's actually just do that and see what that does. Um, that can only be 789. That can only be 689. Yeah, okay, so I'm seeing several things here. The first is row three, where we've got a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple there. And we can see that the six in this quadruple has to live in these two cells. Now that means this cell, because digits can't repeat within a cage, 
that can't be a 6. And similarly, the 7 in this quadruple is here. So one of these two cells must be a 7 in row 3. And that means that cell can't be a 7. And now we've got an 8, 9 pair in row 4. Um, but we can continue this logic. It's the same looking in row 2. We've got a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple. And the 4 in that quadruple is in those two cells. So this cell is not a 4. And the 3 in the quadruple is in those two cells. So that cell is not a 3. So we've now got a 1, 2 pair in row 1. And that means that we can... Hmm, I don't know actually. What does that mean? It must mean something very important and I haven't got a clue what it is. Well, although that cell, because of the king's move constraint, that cell looks interesting. Because both this cell sees a one two three triple and it sees a seven eight nine triple because it because it sees the cell it, it ordinarily couldn't see using sudoku because it can it can see cells that are a king's move away it sees that entire cage and this entire cage so that's a four five or a six and the same is almost true there uh, this one is three five or seven Well, and it's not seven, of course, because it sees seven here, and it's not six because it sees. Oh, that's really interesting. Right. So now, I don't know why I've still got that as yellow. Yeah, that's really, that's actually beautiful, isn't it? Because now all of a sudden I can see something interesting. In row three, where do one and two go? And the answer is in those cells because we can't put them in these two cells and that means neither of these two cells can be one or two which means this is three this is four and now i get one two pairs in columns three and seven and no i almost <laughs> concluded something completely fallacious there um right so What does that mean? How are we going to disambiguate? This looks like a deadly pattern, doesn't it? Those cells there are completely symmetrical. And so how how is the internal logic of this puzzle going to decide whether the one and two are in this pattern or in this pattern? Now, the only thing that will disambiguate those, those patterns I think is got to be a king's move constraint. So that means that one of these two cells must be a one or a two in order to disambiguate these, which I suppose was always going to be the case actually, wasn't it? Because we can't put one and two, we can't make this a Schrodinger cell. So, okay. Um, now, so what does this mean? One and two are looking at this 10 cage. So the minimum value for these two, ah, yeah, okay. So the minimum value of these two squares in theory is three plus four equals seven, but they can't be three and four because then this would be a three and that would A, repeat a digit in the cage and B, clash up here. So this is not three, four. So the next thing it could be is three, five. So this is definitely a one or a two. Um, but it's either 3, 5 or 3, 6 here, which means there's definitely a 3 in this domino. And that means that we can... Hmm, I don't know. And my spider sense is tingling here, but I can't see what to do with that. I'm sure there's something going on in this column. If only I could see what it was. Yeah, um, yes. Yes, well, where does that digit go in this column? There you go, it's got to go there. It can't go there. And from our pencil marks, it's in none of those cells. So those two cells are the same. Um, they are an eight, nine pair. 
Now this green digit has to go in one of those two cells in box one because it can't it can't repeat in the 24 cage. Um, can we do any better than that? One, two, three, four, five, six. So seven is in one of those three cells in column three. Okay, um, I'm not seeing anything else there. So let's try the same trick down here, although this looks less constrained. So the minimum value here is obviously three plus four, but that's absolutely possible. So this has got to be seven or less, which is no restriction at all. Um, yeah, it's actually, it's very different on the right hand side, isn't it? Because this digit, which we managed to pinpoint into this cell in column three, that doesn't work at all because this digit can go in the 14 cage easily enough. Uh, is that actually true? Yes, I think it is. Yes, because this digit could be a one or a two. So that means we could put a we could put a sort of modest digit like a three or a four with an eight or a nine, have a one two here, and then this would absolutely work. So we can put this digit in the 14 cage. Um, Okay, that digit, yeah, okay, what about where does that digit go in box three then? Why don't we ask that question instead? Because that digit has to be in one of those two cells and therefore it is in one of these three cells. I want it to be here just for the symmetry, but I don't think there's a sort of a logical reason why it's not in the, not in here. King's move is that somehow relevant here? We cut. Um, let me just think about no nothing. Ooh, King's moves are really good when digits are on are on a sort of boundary a boundary with a box, but they're not very good here. You can see none of those cells could ever be purple anyway because of the cage logic, and that's simply not got the option. Um, Right, let me think about this. How do we do this? We've got... We've got one and two in this box look like they're a little bit restricted. Certainly... Hmm, is that any use? We can't put both of them in the 23 cage because one plus two is three and that would require the other two digits to add up to 20 and that won't work. So at least one of them is here. But... But I think they could both be here. And that would, so, so yes, okay, whatever digits go in these two cells are quite interesting. Well, especially that cell, actually. Whatever digit in that goes in this cell can't go in any of those cells because of a combination of king's move logic. This cell sees those three and Sudoku logic, it sees all of, the, all of this tetromino piece. So that cell feels like it's a bit restricted. But, okay, all right, I see. Right, so this digit here is not in the 23 cage. Now, what would happen if the other of eight and nine, actually this, the green, therefore, we know purple isn't in here. Is it possible green is not in here either? Now, if green is not in here, 
if green is not in here, then the maximum digits I could put in this cage would be uh, seven, six, five, four, which I want to say is only 22. Seven, six, five, four is only 22. Right, this is important. So green is in here, is in this cage. And green is not there, so green is in one of those three cells. So, yeah, okay, this is very interesting, because now I've got green in here as well. So that means there is a high digit in the 14 cage. Oh, this is gorgeous, right. Because green, we can ask where green goes in this column now, because we've locked it into those that domino in box three, and this triomino in box six. So green is in these cells. In fact, green is not, oh, oh. Oh, this is, <laughs> this is gorgeous, right, I've now understood. Okay, so now, because this can't be green, and we know that one of these three is, is green by Stoku, we know green is in the 14 cage. Well, what do we therefore know is not in the 14 cage with green? Well, the answer to that must be purple, because if there was purple and green in the 14 cage, we'd have had two digits in the 14 cage that add up to eight plus nine, which is 17. And here is a knowledge bomb. 17 is bigger than 14. So that means we can depurplify these and actually purplify this, which means I have now got an 8 9 pair here, which is rather cool. And one of these digits is a very high digit, it's an 8 or a 9. Uh, neither of these digits can be a low digit. So the minimum, okay, so the absolute minimum I can put in the 14 cage now is an 8 and a 3 into these cells, which add up to 11. But they couldn't be 8 and 3 because then that would break this, which would have to be another 3. Hang on, what's going on here? So this can't be 8, 3. It could be 8, 4, and then this would be a 2. Oh, I see. This is a one or a two, is it? Is that the point? Yeah, I think that's the point. Right, so if this is any bigger than, than two, let's try and make this three. I've now got to make this add up to 11, where I know one of the digits is an eight or a nine, and the other digit cannot be three, one or two, and that's impossible. So actually, this is a one or a two. So we might have to colour our ones and twos is now what I'm wondering about. And these two digits either add up to 13 or they add up to 12. Um, okay, so what does that mean? <laughs> Um, the answer is, I'm not sure. I feel I'm on the cusp of understanding this a bit better though. Okay, so maybe we've got to chase purples around the grid, because purple must be in these two cells. So that means purple is in one of those cells. And therefore, purple is in one of these two cells very explicitly. Oh, so purple is not in the 15, but that's a far less interesting restriction, isn't it? The fact that there's not purple or green in 15 is not very surprising. Because the 15 cage ought to have quite low digits in it. Yeah, in fact, look, the 1-2 domino at the top of column 3 is far less restricted than this 1-2 domino. Because absolutely, we might we might want to put the one and the two in the fifteen cage. Um, so, so what is what is it that we've got to understand? I can only put. If I don't put, if I put this 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 one two pair here explicitly, then these cells, the, in fact, those two cells are a one two pair. I 
don't think that's I don't think that's a problem. I might be missing something. Hmm. Okay. Uh Hmm. Okay, I'm stuck. Uh Let's think about this then. Can we somehow... I think there might be a way of disambiguating these. That's what I'm wondering about. These digits... Oh. Oh. oh for goodness sake. Why, why does my brain... Why does my brain tell me there's something going on with these two, but not just tell me what it is before I say, oh, I think there might be something going on with these. And then I look at this and realize there absolutely is. And I could have got this ages ago because my brain is very frustrating. Look at Sudoku. Look at Sudoku on these digits. These digits are one, two, three. Well, these digits are one, two, three, four and five. There's a three, four pair here. So these are one, two and five. This is a three. This is a four. And that must mean all sorts of things are possible. Well, amongst other things, that means that I've got... Well, what does that mean in terms of this 23 cage now? Because I've got to put... Well, okay, this definitely is interesting. Yeah, let's look at this box. We've got a one, two, three triple here. Now, how many of these one twos and threes can we put in our 23 cage? And the answer is one of them only. Only one of them can go in. Because if we put two of them in, even if we were to put the biggest two in, that would be three and two in here. That only adds, well, they add up to five, which means these two cells would have to add up to 18. That's not going to work. So that means these digits appear in those cells. And one of them only appears in here. Oh, this is right. There's loads of stuff going on now. There is loads of stuff going on. Because now this domino has to go in this cage. I think that's right. Because there's not, there's no one or two in here. And there's no three in here. So whatever, whatever this domino is, it's an eight or a nine. And then a four or a five. Yeah, in fact, this maybe that would help if I actually notated this. Because, because this is either adding up to 13 or 12 and it's got an eight or a nine in it, it could have, it could be five, eight. That's the maximum that the sort of second highest digit could be. But you can see that that second high digit, the four or the five, where is it gonna go in this box? Well, it's gonna go in the 23 cage along with its friend. So these two digits go in here, along with one of these three digits. So what does that mean? So that means that the maximum I can put in here is 13 from these and a three, which is 16. And that's, that's done it. That is so... That's so smart of Kodak, isn't it? I think I was just privileged to breathe the same air as him today. Look at this. Right. So I think we now know what this cage is, believe it or not. And I think that the way that we analyze this is we say, OK, we now know that this cage has a one, two or a three in it. And it has two of these digits in it. A high one, i.e. an 8 or a 9, and a low one, a 4 or a 5. Now, if we put anything else in here, but... Oh, actually, no, we could have 4, 9. We could have 4, 9 or 5, 8, adding to 13. So we can put 13 in here, being these two digits, whatever they are. We can put 3 from here. That's the most we could put in. That's 16. Now, that means that this has to be at least equal to 7. And it cannot be higher than 7 because 8, 9 and looking, looking at it. So this is 7. 
this there is a three in this cage so there's no three here the, these two digits add up to 13 which means this cell is a one this cell is a two this is not a two this is not a one uh, seven eight and nine are in this this lot of digits this is adding up to 13 these Uh, come on, Simon. Um, ah, okay. Well, let's just let. Uh, I can't see anything clever over here, so I'm going to. I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit. This is a two, so that means they have got to be a three and a five. Now, what does that mean? Ah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, wow, uh, I really am not sure. So we could, we could think about. I've got a one-two pair here. Ah, yes, I've got my one-two pair into these two cells because there's a one-two pair looking at this cell. So these are a one-two pair. Um, so there's a whole load of traffic noise. It's aeroplane noise, motorcycle noise. It's very distracting. Um, hmm. Hmm. Right, okay, let's change tack. Let's think about king's moves then, because I've just noticed something quite interesting about king's moves. Row four. Row four is interesting. Okay, I think this I think this is right. I am not totally certain though, but I think it's right. Where do one and two go in this row? Now, not here or here. These see these cells. One of them is here, that's clear. Can you put one or two into these cells is my next question. Now, this one clearly can't be one or two because it sees every one of these cells and this is a one, two, five, triple. So that can't be one or two. Now this cell can't be one. And if you put a one in either of those cells, you rule it out of both of those because of the king's move constraint. And that breaks those three cells. And the same is true of two, look. Two can't go here. And if you put two there, you can't put two into those two cells. This is so ridiculous, codec. So that's a one or a two. That digit cannot go in the 15 cage. Oh, I was just wondering if there's some... No, there's no way on earth I can say by uniqueness that this is a one or a two. Because there would be no way of the internal logic of the puzzle disambiguating these, that deadly pattern. Because you couldn't put a one or a two into those cells because obviously this would be a one-two pair. So we know, we know from uniqueness this is not going to be a one or a two, but we won't use uniqueness to solve it. Uh, well, in fact, yeah, the other way of realising that this can't be a 1 or a 2 is to think about it in the context of that 15 cage. Because that 15 cage, if it didn't have a 1 or a 2 in it, its minimum total would be 3, 4, 5 and 6, which I think adds up to 18. So that's clearly, there's clearly a 1 or a 2 in here. Um, but what is it that's in there? Do we have a way of telling? We could argue that. Um, I don't know. I can't see how to do it. No, 
There's no seven in here. There's no green digit in here. Oh, is that? Okay, hang on. Let me think about that. Is that true? Is it true there's no seven in here? I think it is true. There's a seven there. Yes, the seven is, seven is in one of those. Seven is in one of these. So there is no seven in here. There's no green digit in there. And I don't think there's a purple digit either. So this has not got seven, eight or nine in it. So does it have to have six in it? If it didn't have six in it, it would be five, four, three, which is 12 plus two, which is 14. So there is a six in this cage, but unfortunately we don't have a clue where it goes. Is there a five in it? Six, four, three, two. No, there doesn't have to be. Wow. Okay. So there is a six in this cage. So, yeah, okay, here's something interesting. Where is the six in box one? It's in one of those cells. So how could the six in the 15 cage be in one of those three cells? Well, it couldn't, because if it was, where would we put a six in this column? Yes, okay, that's, that's, that's an alternative way and a more sensible way of coming about this. We've worked out there's a six in the 15 cage. We could look at column three and say, where's the six? It's got to be in one of those three cells. That rules those out of being six, and this is a six. So now these three digits have got to add up to nine without being one, two, six. So these are either two, three, four, or one, three, five. So there is a three in them. So now, ah, ah, so where does three now go in row four? It can't go there and it can't go there and it can't go there and by the king's move, it can't go here. So there, that is a three. Good grief. Good grief. Now, now where does four go in this row? Not there, by not not here by King's move, not there by Sudoku move. That's a four. Now this has not got four in it. So this has to be five. Yeah, this has to be five eight. Because if it's five nine, that has to be a zero and it can't be. So this is five eight. Purple is nine. Purple is nine. Green is eight. Green is eight. Wow, okay, this is very, very clever. It's, it's actually remarkably clever, isn't it? This is, it's weirdly clever. Um, so now, oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. Look, I've got a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple in this row. Well, they've got to go into those cells and that is beautiful because that means three of those four digits have to add up to 21. Well, that means they're the six, seven, and eight. That's the only, only three of those that will add to 21. This becomes a nine. Nine is in one of two positions in box two. Nine is in exactly one position now in box number, box number three, which means we might be able to learn more about the nines around the grid. Mm, uh, or maybe not. Nine is ruled out of here. So nine is in one of those three cells. Oh yeah, this is right, okay. So now we can use the knight's move again. Well, not knight's move, king's move. So let's focus on box five very carefully and ask where nine goes. Right, by Sudoku, we can rule it out of this T pentomino. This cell takes care of that one. The fact there's a nine in one of those two cells rules nine out of both of these because of the king's move. So that's a nine, um, which means that's a nine, which means that now we've done, so now this is a nine. Uh, let's get rid of the coloring for this cell. Fill this as in a nine. We've got a six, seven pair here, which is nice. And we've got no nines in those two cells. So there's a nine in one of these and a nine in one of these. And that's all that's left regarding nines. These cells have got to be three, four, and five, which means we know what this, uh, no, we don't know what that is. That is a one or a two. And whatever it is, is not in here. 
but we know yeah this is interesting right now we're going to start coloring i think our ones and twos with a bit more uh, prudence because this digit must be the same as this one because this digit cannot go in the 15 cage and yet there must be a one or a two in the 15 cage because we know that these three cells add up to nine and if we didn't have a one or a two in them at all they would add up to too many so those two must be the same digit um, which means this is something else let's make this orange now this one must be blue this one must be orange There must be some way of differentiating this stuff at the top. Um, so we now know there's an orange in here. We don't know which cell it is. Um, I know there's an orange in one of those. Oh, hang on. There's actually an orange in one of these expl explicitly because there's a one two pair in the, the row and I can't differentiate this these two either this is strange all right let's let's go back to row four then five six and seven. Ooh. Ooh. what does that mean so this can't be five because if this was five it would rule five out of both of its possible positions in row four so that is that's a one or a two So how does that work? This is very peculiar. I can't see how to do this. Um, if that's a one, you get a one here and a one here. Oh, that's weird. That's so strange. Wow. Okay. Okay. Prepare for more incoming strangeness. This is very peculiar to me. I don't quite get this, but but here is here is something silly. <laughs> okay. You cannot put five in both of those cells. That will break the rules of Sudoku. So if there's no five in both of these cells, we know either this is a one or this is a two. Okay, one of those things must be true. But whichever way round that is, it resolves this one two pair here in the same way. Because if this is a one, you get a one here and a one here. So let's remember that. That would be the disposition of ones if this is a one. Now, if on the other hand, if this is the five, and therefore this is the two, the two would go here, which means there would be a one here and a one here again. So it's the same either way round. So that means we don't know which way round, th which one of these is not five, but we always know how this deadly pattern unwinds. And that's not you, we didn't use uniqueness to do that. We just used the fact that one of these had to be a five um, because you, you couldn't put a five here, but that's that's even even more strange. Is that that has not well maybe it's not strange, but it hasn't resolved this at all. We can't color these using our color scheme. So there's going to have to be something else that dis differentiates this. Okay, so eight is in one of those cells. These cells are now known. There are six and a seven. That's probably worth notating. Look, there's a six, seven pair there. And you get all, all of these weird patterns now. So this digit has to go there in row four. Yeah, okay. That's, that is worth noting. Oh, this is, oh, this is going to do it. This is yeah, this is going to do it. Now I'm going to move on from colouring ones and twos to colouring sixes and sevens. Let's think about where this digit explicitly, I'll make it red, where does that digit go in row four? Now it doesn't go here, obviously it's in the same box, and it can't go there by king's move. So that digit must go here. 
which means it's a, this digit is, you've guessed it, a 6 or a 7. Well, that means this digit is a 5, which means this digit is a 1, that's a 2, and that's a 5. And that has differentiated this little string. Um, so now these digits are 6, 7, and 8. This digit touches this one and sees itself by that, that cell, so that's, that's red. These two are something different. These two are yellow. Yellow could not go here. So yellow is in one of these two cells. Don't know which one. We've got a very, very colorful grid, but it looks more like a kaleidoscope that's been sort of bashed on the ground, doesn't it? It's not very regular <laughs> at the moment. Uh, right, what are those digits then? They are four, five, and seven. So, can nearly do some eliminations. That can't be seven. That can't be four. But I don't think that we've got anything more than that. Oh, now I know, now I must know what's in this twenty-three cage because if this is a six-seven pair, this is fixed. Oh yeah, it's, it was fixed once we got those, wasn't it? So this is three, five, and eight. That's not. Th oh no, that could be three. We don't know anything about. No, we don't know anything about three and its exact position. So have we, mm, okay. Bobbins, right, so these squares are three, four, and six by Sudoku. That can't be six. So we've got, um, oh, this six, seven, eight is looking at this cell. So that's five, that's eight, that's three, that's five. That's four in the corner, no song, ha ha. Uh, that's five in the corner, again, no song. That's seven, that's four. This isn't seven. And we can get rid of five from here. Oh, this, this, this column must be done now. Oh no, three, there's a three, six, eight, triple. I don't believe it. You rotten thing. Wow, okay. Uh, so there's a three, six pair here though. So that means in this row, we've not seen an occurrence of four and seven. So let's put those in. That means these squares down at the bottom are ones, twos, or nines. And I've got some weird highlighting here. Oh, this is, okay, yeah, that's the one or the two that's not, that's this orange digit, isn't it? So, hmm. So this, this must be a blue, blue one or two. Okay. And, and we get stuck again. So how do we unstick ourselves here? What is it? I suspect there's a lot of Sudoku we could do in this position. This is five, six, and eight. That's not eight. That's not six. That doesn't seem to have resolved itself. Ooh, here's something. Here's something a little bit interesting. Those two digits have to add up to that digit. Because uh, that the, these cells add up to 30, which means by the secret, these cells add up to 15. So we can think about this as x. Let's make those three cells equal to x x plus 6 equals 15, but we also know that these cells add up to 15, so x plus this equals 15, so this and this are the same. That means this cell is a 4 or a 5. And that... <laughs> that's very interesting, but completely irrelevant because it doesn't do anything. Yeah, oh, by the way, if you were wondering how I knew these added up to 15 and what the secret is, well, the secret is that any box of a Sudoku contains the digits 1 to 9 once each, and those digits add up, you've guessed it, to 45. Um, right, golly gosh. Okay, so therefore, ah, that's a 4 by Sudoku. I've just noticed there's a 3, 5 looking at that. So can we, ah, so the 5, it goes here. This is a 3. 
So that means we can place four using the king's move restriction right in the middle of the grid. That gives us this. Yes, here we go. Now we've got blue is one, which means orange is two, which means that we can get rid of the one from here. We've now get rid of the gray flash. We know this is a two nine pair. We can blueify the ones all over and we can greenify, sorry, orangeify the twos. That means this is now two, three, four, look. Which means that I uh, don't quite know what that means. This five is useful though. That gets me an eight there, which means this is a six and this is a five, which means we must know what those digits are at the top of the grid. They have got to be three and six, which is resolved. So six goes here, three goes here. Um, oh, okay, I thought that was going to resolve all of this as well, but it doesn't seem to want to. There is a certain amount of recalcitrance present in the grid now. We're going to have to work something else out. But I do think we're slowly but surely closing in on a solution now. These are, yeah, beautiful. Look at this column. We need six, seven, and eight, but here there's a six, seven pair looking at this digit. So this is an eight, which is the green eight, isn't it? Which means this is not the green eight. This five is lovely. That gives me this digit as a three, which is not green. This is a three. This is a six. This is a six. This is an eight. That's an eight. That's a five, which means we can tidy up our green edges like so and okay and that means that we've got oh six here so we've got a seven eight pair in this column so that must be a one and one is not the yellow digit one is a blue digit so that's goes there this square and now is the six or the seven which means this digit is, if we've not made an error, a two. And that two is not seeing any other twos. It puts a two, four, three in here, two, nine in here, nine, seven in here, seven, four in here. Lovely. Okay, so that's great. I think we're there, aren't we? I think we're there. And even having eaten copious amounts of sushi, it still might be possible for me to solve this puzzle. Um, Okay, He's, I'm saying that, but it does occur to me that these sixes and sevens are not resolved yet. Oh, they really aren't. Right, okay, something something needs to do these. What is it? There must be a six or a seven poking into this pattern, otherwise I've got a problem. Seven, there it is. That seven's poking into this one. So yellow is six. Phew. Six, six, six. Sign of the devil making an appearance. Um but we can still finish said puzzle like that. And I will just tidy up the pen, the coloring to make sure people don't get cross with me. Um, these cells are uncolored. So have we left anything? Yes, that eight is, should be green, shouldn't it? So double click the eights. That eight should be green. I don't know why that didn't just light up. We've got all the nines. We've got all of the all of the ones. We've got all of the twos, and the sevens are most certainly not done, but they are now, and the sixes are now done as well. And that is a fully chromatically consistent grid, and what a beautiful puzzle! That was really weird as well. There was some lots of stuff in that I don't claim to understand quite quite that this one two pair being resolved in a sort of you know, it was always resolved this way round, no matter what, where the, where the five was, was very peculiar. And there was some beautiful logic in this row. Row four was, I think, the key. Well, row four was the key, but there was also all this eight, nine stuff at the start, which was absolutely lovely. And the key being we managed to lock eight and nine into those cells. Yeah, there's an awful lot of clever stuff in there. The lion roared. And Kodak, thank you very much for your company today. And thank you very much for this Sudoku. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.